Turning it over hi. to you, Bonnie. Hi, everyone. My name is Bonnie Sang. Um, I use she, her pronouns. I'm a second year transfer at UCLA and I'm majoring in political science. Um, and I'm so excited to show you guys how to use my UCLA because I remember when I first uh, was doing all of my transition stuff when I was coming to UCLA last year, it was really confusing and there's so many tabs and then there's tab, oh, sorry, my AirPod fell out. <laughs> One second, let me disconnect. Can you guys hear me okay? Oh, no. My UCLA is literally like tabs inside of tabs. Yeah, there's tabs with inside of tabs. And sometimes you click on that link and it's to another link. So it's overwhelming. But I'm here to break it down and show you guys how to do it. And I have a really cute little slideshow to show you too. So it can help show and like visualize what we need to do. All right. So let me share my screen. All right. Ooh, ooh. I'm so sorry, how do you present? Ooh, okay, let's go. All right, perfect. so um, there's like so many tabs at the top, but I'm gonna break down the first six, the six that I think are super important. So there's class planning, you have the message center, finances and jobs, academics, campus life and staff. So I feel like the, mo the most popular ones that I use or the most common ones are class planning, the message center, and also staff because I work at the transfer student center. So I use that a lot to access my timesheet and also academics. There's so many within that. So I can also share my screen to show my, my UCLA. And then the duo push is always going to be there, you guys. Like, it's always there. You can never get rid of it. It's, like, chronic. Like, it's your best friend. Just don't lose your phone. <laughs> All right. Okay. So this is what typically my and everyone else's UCLA, my UCLA looks like. So you're going to have, like, my features, faculty, classes, academics, staff, finances and jobs, campus life, and other student services. I know other student services and it's like boom everything and everything is in there um but classes is you'll use it for registration you'll use it to like check course description enrollment action so you know if you're on a wait list you want to drop a class add a class everything and everything's there you want to check your unofficial transcripts you need to send transcripts you're going to do that here too also if you need an accommodation for accessible education you need to send that to like your faculty and stuff or sorry your department that you're in or the class that you're taking that's how you go through there too. So, and then for academics, um, this is where you can check your DARS and for checking DARS is really useful to see like how many units you're away from essentially just getting your degree. So, and the breakdown's really nice. I would show you guys, but I feel like no one needs to see my GPA and stuff. <laughs> Not that it's bad. Anyways, um, but it's it's such a nice visual aid. It's like an acute little like bar chart. It'll be like you have this, this many credits for your major, this many for your GEs and upper division electives. And also because we're transfer students, it shows all of your transfer credit too that you have done for your low division preparatory work. So it's really nice. Um, and then also appointments is a major one. So I remember an Emily session, um, a student was asking, how can I contact um, a counselor? And appointments is your way to go. And then Sorry, just going to move this little thing here. And the message center is like, if you're contacting someone to ask a question about a minor, major, just basic counseling, to make a Zoom appointment for that counseling, it's all done through here. So I can show you guys how to go about it. It's kind of like, um, yeah, see, it says my major, in my minor interest for statistics right there. Um, so we can do ask a question. And the way that's breaking down is kind of nice. So if you have a certain topic you want to ask, a my UCLA feature, and just academic counseling. So for example, let's say I'm a political science major and then we'll go to poli sci. Perfect. And let's say that my subject is like just like major requirements. And then whatever question you have, you kind of, I just type it like email format and then boom, it sends. But also if you have like multiple questions, I highly, highly recommend you jot all your questions down, put it into the message box because, um, Unlike an email, it gets sent individually to like the counseling end side. So um, if you want all your questions just answered in one format, I recommend doing that. And then you just hit send. It's really easy. It's a little bit complicated at first. And if you need to like, you know, attach something like a class schedule, or you're like, hey, I wasn't sure about this course description or something, and you just wanted more clarification, you can also do that. Um, and then same for like a topic um, within that. There's like some like, you know, academic advising, 
it's all in there. Add or drop too, you know, if, you know, you weren't sure if you should drop this class, add a class. It's a good way to go about it. You just, you have to play around with it too. I think that's a, my biggest piece of advice for using my UCLA and message center. It's just playing around with things and figuring out how it best works for you. Um, and then for classes, um, I feel like everyone's NSA did a great job. Um, hey, Emily. <laughs> They did a great job at explaining how to use this, how to add a class, drop a class, um, and all these enrollment actions and stuff. And you even are able to, like, calculate your GPA and stuff like that. Um, let's see. And even, like, there's workshops. So when you first go on, like, the homepage of my UCLA, I don't know if I'm able to go back here. But there's kind of, like, a calendar set up, like, on the right side. And also, like, upcoming workshops that are there for students. So I think for this month, they had some regarding to like research. You can click on that and I'll send you to like a link to sign up for it. And it's really cool. Um, but if you want like the whole breakdown of workshops, you're able to access it there too. And there's virtual counseling and stuff like that. The commencement tab, I'm supposed to be clicking on this very soon. I have not played with it yet, but for graduation stuff, this is your, this is gonna be your guys' link very soon too. Um, and staff stuff, um, I fill out stuff on my timesheet. So if you're employed by the school, this is where you'll go. You also have UC Path, which just nicely breaks down things. Um, I forgot what UC Path does, but it's okay. We don't need to know at the moment. <laughs> um, finances and jobs. This is really also important because this is where people are able to access your Bruin Bill um, and your financial aid as well. And scholarships notice everything is in here. It's a big tab and it can be very overwhelming, um, but I've personally gone to the financial aid department and they've explained this very well to me and very nicely. So you're able to check out your awards and notices. Um, and like, if you want to access more scholarships too, you're able to do it through here as well. Just through like the scholarship homepage, you just log in again with their UCLA information or the login. And it's just like another link in a link, but it's helpful. Um, and then campus life, this is also a lot, but this is where you're able to make, if you have UC SHIP or you just um, have wave UC SHIP, but you still need to make you know, a healthcare appointment, you can do it through here in this health and safety tab. Um, there's also some social events. I've personally not used this before. Um, oh, but UCLA does use Slack. So um, within the Slack, you're able to like access everything and anything. So I'm personally signed up for like the Career Center Slack. So sometimes we'll get notifications regarding internships coming up or like job fairs. So within that Slack, you'll just log in again with your UCLA information. And you get to, it's really cool. You get to choose what channel they're interested in and join. And you can, however you want to adjust the settings for notifications, you can do that. I always have them on for the Career Center because it's cool that I'm like updated in the loop for stuff that's upcoming in the LA area and just job opportunities. Um, housing is great too. So if you have any question, if you just wanna access your housing application or ask housing question, it's great. It just takes you to that link to either email them or call them. Um, also voting registration is here. Um, I personally did my voting registration in high school, so I'm not sure how this looks like, but it's cool if you're not registered to vote, go vote, or register to vote. Um, parking application as well. Commuters, uh, they changed the parking rules this year, but last year I was um, an on-campus student living in the university apartments and I had my car on campus. So I was using the parking application a lot. It will just take you to the parking application and you just, again, everything's through UCLA login, you just log in like normal and you just have to play around with it. Yeah, I hope I, I'm not sure if I'm talking too fast or anything. Is there any, any questions? Great. What questions do folks have? The other uh, one I can hear housing wise, by the way, is, oh, I'm so sorry, is the housing maintenance request. If you are living in university housing apartments or um, residence hall dorms, you can actually put in your own maintenance request. So if you're like, hey, um, I'm missing one of my blinds, they can then put it in queue to like come in and fix it for you. So you can lodge your own or you can also talk to the front desk and they can submit one for you. What was the question? Hi, it was about, um, I heard that UCLA also uses Canvas for classes. Is that correct? That is correct. And do you access that through my UCLA or? You don't mind going over that? Um, I personally have just, I was actually helping a student today earlier with this question. Um, I can show you in another tab. Sarah, can we access it through my UCLA or no? I don't think we can. Um, it's a weird link. I just type in like Brew and Learn. Yeah, I think there might be like a link to it. 
um, our running joke about UCLA. So while there is a lot in my UCLA and it's really helpful to familiarize yourself, I still always just type in UCLA and then whatever I'm looking for to get an even more direct path. But yeah, this is this is the best way to log in. If it is in there, Bonnie, it would be under the academics tab, I think. Oh, okay. Academics. Oh, so Emily Singer, you can download it. Yeah. It's a really good question. We recently, um, my guess was it would be under core class resources or maybe not. Yeah, I think you might just have to go to Brew and Learn directly. Um, I've definitely seen faculty that send out an email prior to the first class and say like, here's our Brew and Learn um, landing page. So you can go directly to it. Um, it's a good question, Zoe. So we are recording right now and we will be placing it on YouTube. So if you have to leave a little bit early, you can find the recording part. Um, here on our YouTube channel. And I will say a shameless plug, we do have recordings from previous years and we've intentionally made these sessions different than last year's so that it sort of builds on some of the material that's on there. And so if you want to like learn more, um, there's some other sessions from last year's transfer transitions. Um, let me, that's a really good question though about Brew and Learn. Um, UCLA just transitioned to Canvas. Was it last year? Do you know, Bonnie? Um, when was I entered on Canvas, in, yeah, when I entered in my first year, um, they called it Brew and Learn, but it was like basically Canvas. But I'm not sure why they call it Brew and Learn instead of just Canvas. But the layout's exactly the same as Canvas that I learned, like that I was using, like in community college and stuff. That no, that's a good question. Why are they calling it? I don't know the answer to that. Mm -hmm. But uh, UCLA just recently, in the last like 18 months, transitioned to Canvas, and I will say, <laughs> I we were like laughing because most most folks have um, transferred from a place that was using Canvas. And so actually transfers knew how to use the Canvas platform significantly better than the non-transfers. So y'all like really had a leg up on the, the freshman entry folks at that point in time. Um, so we've, we've just had Canvas about a year now, a little bit more than a year. Um, but uh, it's a significant improvement because UCLA used to have their own like self-built system. And from everything I've heard, people like Canvas an awful lot. Um, so once you log into Brew and Learn, um, you'll be able to at see any coursework that's been put up there. I will say um, experientially that some faculty members are gonna go in real early and put stuff on there. And other faculty members are gonna like load it the day that class starts. Um, it really just depends on the faculty member, what they're up to. Like we said in the previous session, they're also people too. And so they may or may not have other like time commitments um, prior to starting classes. Um, and so you might have stuff in there in advance of your first class. Um, I would always check to make sure if you have any readings in there. Um, some faculty members do ask you to like read something before your first class. Um, usually they'll send you an email um, letting you know. Oh, I know one other thing I wanted you to show, Bonnie. When you click on your name, I was just top, thinking of that. Yeah, you're thinking the same thing. Um, it's really important next to your name, the settings part. Um, in here, you can update a whole bunch of information. Honestly, it's always important to have an emergency contact set up just in case something happened on campus. Um, also, you can about a little more than halfway down, it says official email address and phone. You can click in there and you can like um, show um, exactly uh, what name and contact email address you want listed as your preferred email. Whatever is listed there is the default email that UCLA emails are gonna go to. Many people have it as their g.ucla email. I have also met students though, um, this always frightens me personally, that they're like, I didn't know I had one of those. <laughs> and so I'm assuming they have a different email listed as their default, because otherwise they're definitely missing messages from their faculty members. Um, but you want to definitely know which email is listed and make sure that you're checking that email. And I would say, especially as a new student, your spam somewhat regularly, because I will say I have noticed that um, especially when you're brand new, a good number of emails will go to your spam. I don't exactly know why, um, but that's another important one to check and like know where that is. Um, any other things you want us to show before I stop recording, we can answer. Oh, that literally happened to you. Yes, exactly. Um, 
That's a great question about textbooks. Anything else you want to see in my UCLA or questions you have? I kinda, oh, sorry. Okay, okay. I just have one thing, just because I um, wasn't living on in the dorms, but I saw the UCLA dining menu, and I thought maybe that was a good idea for students that were living on the hill and just needed access to their dining menu and stuff like that. Yeah, do you feel comfortable clicking it? It'll show um, you what, what they're cooking okay. today. Oh. I know a weird amount of, of course, it's like, no, no thanks. Don't want to show it. Um, I can tell you, can you just Google UCLA dining menu? Yes. If you are living on campus or you have a meal um, voucher later this year, um, and then just click the first one where it says menus. My favorite thing about this, and I say this as a vegetarian, <laughs> sorry, but um, there's all these symbols. They're at the bottom where it says legend. So if you have an allergy, there is a something you don't eat, et cetera. This is really, really clutch. Um, Cause I know if it's got the V or like the leaf thing, I know it's vegetarian. Um, so it'll show you what like the main entrees are. And then if you go up, can you click um, right below activity level? Um, it says uh, detailed menu. Yes. Perfect. So it'll actually show you everything they're making and then click on any one of those items. I don't Delicious. know if that wants to pop up. Cilantro rice. Oh yeah. So it'll show you exactly what's in it. If you are someone with allergies, it'll show you all the nutritional information. When I used to live on the Hill, my, um, my partner used to enter all this stuff into my fitness pal. If there's any, my fitness pal fans out there. Um, and so you can actually, if you're ever eating in the dining halls, you can look this information up. I think you can also look it up on the same place for Epic at Ackerman if you're eating there, but this is just for the dining hall um, based food, just as a heads up. You should be able to link to that um, through my UCLA. Um, if not, it's totally Googleable. I'm going to pause recording and then we can take any questions you may have.